recording this session. <clears throat> we recorded uh, the session I gave last week as well, last Saturday. So uh, if you were not able to uh, be part uh, be part of that, you can you can look at that. What I was essentially doing was uh, going through the uh, the competition um, topics that you might consider um, writing about because the uh, competition is can be one of two parts. You can write an essay that's three to 500, 300 to 500 words long. In addition to that, you also will um, upload a speech about three minutes long. Um, and I guess some of you might be thinking, well, what is that speech? Do I just read my essay? Well, actually, uh, the speech would be about three minutes. So three minutes, I have timed that out to be about 200 words. So Three minute speech would be about 200 words, but you're actually writing a, a longer essay, three to 500 words. So the speech is a summary of, of, your, uh, of your essay, of what you think about AI and the future of our world. Uh, you could be adding additional material into that, but it's, it's a summary. So you're just, you're just not reading your essay. Um, you're, uh, you're, you're summarizing it or you're adding some additional material. It's up to you. The other thing you might want to do, if you're a visual person, um, will be uh, an artwork. And I'll be talking about both the essay, how to make a better essay, how to improve it, um, how to make a better speech, uh, an oral presentation, uh, and also uh, give you some ideas of the kind of art you might be, you might be doing. All right, so I've done uh, this week, what I did last week, I've prepared a slide presentation. I have about 22 or 23 slides that I'll go through. Um, uh, so the, uh, the competition will be held over a two day period. Uh, that's in about nine weeks time. So it'll be on March the 22nd for the senior group and uh, March the 23rd uh, for the junior group. I think I got that right. It might be the other way around, but anyway, it, there's a two days and you can, you can look at the rules for the competition. So you'll see me again there because I'll be emceeing that. I'll be um, hosting and introducing you to the judges. And, and, uh, and so that'll be a very exciting time. So you'll see me again after today's presentation. Are there any questions anyone has before we start uh, based on what we did last week? Anything you want to ask? Before I get started, I'll go. I'll go through a bit of my presentation, then I'll stop, and I'll I'll uh, allow you to ask some questions there. So, I have about an hour's worth of material, uh, but I'll stop halfway through. Okay. Um, any questions anyone has at this point? Okay. So I'm going to uh, open my slide presentation. I'm going to share the screen. Here we go. Sharing it. Okay. You can all see my screen. So the topic, uh, the topic of this competition, the Global Youth Challenge 2024, is artificial intelligence and the future of our world. So you got to be thinking about AI as you know it today and AI as you believe it will evolve, how it will change our world. Will it be for the good? Will it be for the, for the not so good? Will it cause chaos? Will it, uh, will it cause promise and, and, and a brighter future? Will it solve many of the problems we, we seem to be facing today? The competition could be of two types, the essay, three to 500 words, uh, or a three, to five, a three minute recorded speech. It could be an artwork, uh, that would be a poster, could be a collage, a painting, a drawing. And I inquired as to whether it could be a video. Yes, it can be a video. You could make a video in which you answer uh, the challenge question, artificial intelligence and the future of our world. And then you'll have to also include a three minute recorded speech. So let me uh, just move my screen over a little bit here. Okay, so what is the focus of the essay? The focus of the essay is AI in the future of our world. 
Okay, so what you are going to be writing, there are many kinds of uh, essays. If you've been taking English literature, you'll know that we have argumentative essays, literary essays in which you talk about a poem or a book or a play. Um, but what uh, I think what we can call your essay is an expository essay. You're, you're, you're exposing ideas that you have, thoughts that you have to an audience. Okay. Yes, it can also be considered an opinion essay, but I think we'll just call it uh, expository. Um, so you have to focus on the topic and clearly state what you believe. Your essay has to be, of course, well organized. It has to be a strong, logically ordered. It has to stay unique. It has to have unity and coherence. You have to stay on the topic. Be very careful not to stray too far off the topic. And remember, you've only got 300 to 500 words to, to actually work with. You've got to, in your essay, develop a, a logical supporting facts. As many details and explanations and examples as you can, as you can come up with to give us examples of how you see the future in AI. Write clearly with clarity. Grammar, of course, and spelling are very important. So it should be, you should read over your essay out loud. I cannot stress that enough. It's so important when you do any major writing for any subject in school, read it out loud. Why? Because when we are writing, we are typing. We're using our eyes. If we just read over with our eyes what we've written when we're finished, we're losing the ability to use some of their other senses. So if we read out loud, our ears will hear mistakes. Our mouth will speak mistakes and our eyes will see mistakes. So you'll be using three modalities, all of your senses to, uh, to correct. It's quite surprising when you actually read something you've written, you will hear mistakes and that doesn't sound right. Oh, that's not the right word. No, that's, that's not the word I meant. That's misspelled. We don't, our eyes are not that efficient in finding mistakes, not nearly as efficient as our hearing and our, our, our speech. So, so write, write clearly and use smooth transitional expressions. That is in between sentences, as you're as you're making a point, you'll you'll uh, you'll want to use expressions that connect you to other ideas. So we say transitional expressions are things like therefore, similarly, furthermore, nevertheless. I have a whole list in front of me here. Subsequently, therefore, moreover, uh, consequently. These are transitional uh, words that 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 tie together the ideas that we're. The idea that we're we're trying to connect. Somebody has their microphone turned on. Can you turn off your microphone so I can hear some background? Thank you very much. All right. So we can think of uh, the essay that you're writing as your opinion and, and as persuasive essays. You're trying to convince us of an opinion that you have. But what is the purpose of the essay? Well, you're exploring a topic, AI in the future of our world. You're expressing ideas and opinions that you have based on research that you do. You're trying to inform us, educate us, uh, convince us of your point of view and persuade us. Every essay has a beginning, of course. And many students think, well, I, my, my essay will begin with an introductory sentence. Actually, think of your essay as beginning with a hook. I have a picture of a, of a fish hook. Why do we use it? We use it to catch a fish, to pull in a fish from the water. Uh, an essay should begin with an idea that hooks us, that brings your reader into the audience to want to read more. You hook them and then you've got them caught and then you can pull them into your essay. So think of your audience as a fish that needs to be hooked. There are a couple of ways of hooking, hooking an audience. And I'll give you some examples, but there you are. Using a statistic or a fact, start with a statistic or a fact that is true. Or 
use a rhetorical question. And I'll give you an example. A rhetorical question is a question that doesn't really need an answer. You're not expecting, when you start your essay with a rhetorical question, you're not expecting the audience to answer it. Uh, you're expecting them to think. So it's, it's a question you don't really want the answer to. Uh, another hook could be a quotation that you find on the internet, and it relates to your essay. Or you can use an anecdote. An anecdote is a personal experience that you have had. So this is the first thing you put in your essay. Statistic, rhetorical question, or a quote, or an anecdote. Here's an example. I want to do an essay about coffee. I love coffee. How could I start an essay about coffee using a statistic? Well, 3 billion people drink coffee every day. That's 74% of the world population. And then you, you've cooked. Oh, wow, I want to know more. That's a true fact, by the way. I went online today. There are 8 billion people in the world. 3 billion. 3 billion. Uh, sorry. Uh, 3 billion people drink coffee every day. Here's the use of a rhetorical question. Is there anyone on the planet who doesn't enjoy a hot cup of coffee in the morning? That would be a hook using a rhetorical question. And then I go on to uh, explain what, what uh, uh, furthermore uh, in my essay about coffee. Or I'm gonna write an essay about coffee and I wanna begin with a quotation. Someone said, coffee is a language in itself. Who's that? Anybody know who that is? Who said that? That's a true quote. Jackie Chan. You got it. Jackie Chan, famous actor. So, uh, so uh, I, I, I didn't put an example of a of a of a of a, um, a personal anecdote, but it could it uh, it could simply uh, be a statement like. Um, Oh, I always felt that coffee is a hug in a mug and it lifts uh, and that life is too short to drink bad coffee. That would be like my personal opinion. Uh, OK, uh, or I, I would start an essay. I, no day begins in my life without a cup of coffee or three. So you share some personal experience that you have. <clears throat> OK, what comes after the hook? The hook, by the way, is a sentence or two. You, you don't have a very long hook, but just a sentence or two is enough. After the hook, you briefly state your best points. Okay. So if you're writing a if you're writing a 500 word essay, you might want to have five different points, different ideas, different uh, opinions that you want to uh, that you want to express. All right, you wouldn't put five of them in your introductory paragraph. I would suggest you would put three. If you're writing a 300 word essay, oh, you're, if you're writing a 300 word essay, you're oh, probably, someone, oh, is, someone has an open mic. Can you close your mic, please? If you're writing a 300 word essay, you're probably only gonna have enough time to explore three points, three ideas in your essay. And so you might want to put those three into your into your opening essay, but uh, you're just briefly stating what you're going to uh, what you're going to develop and explore in your in later in your essay, in what we call body paragraphs. Your thesis statement uh, uh, follows your those points that you explain. So your your opening paragraph begins with a hook, and then briefly stating three possibly two, three points that you're going to explore. And then you state your opinion, what you believe. We call that the thesis statement. The thesis statement should be very specific and clearly state your opinion, what you believe, what you want to persuade your audience to believe. Your thesis statement appears in the introduction. At the end of each paragraph, you restate your thesis statement at the end of each paragraph, changing the words, <clears throat> changing the words. You don't put the same sentence, change the words and make it fresh and put it at the end of your conclusion. So I want to see your thesis statement at the end of the introductory paragraph, at the end of each paragraph, we call that the link. 
and at the conclusion of the essay. Your thesis statement should cover only what you will discuss in your essay, okay? And it should be supported with specific evidence throughout your essay. Now, your topic may change as you are writing. You might, your, your imagination, your mind, your knowledge will, may change some of the emphasis of your essay. So you want to look at your thesis statement again and again before you submit to make sure that you didn't change. Okay, sometimes we'll begin with a thesis statement and as we write our essay, we're, we, we, we're changing, we're getting away, a little bit away from the thesis. Always go back to it and make sure that it's still accurate and it still represents your opinions. The thesis statement is your interpretation of the subject. It's your, your, your interpretation. It's not a topic. You don't describe what artificial intelligence is in your thesis. That's your topic. What you're telling us about is your interpretation, your, your feeling, your impression, what you believe. A strong thesis statement is specific, precise, forceful, confident. And it can be demonstrated and proven with example after example. A strong thesis statement challenges your audience with your point of view. And they can debate it, they can disagree with you, but your evidence supports your view. Now, after, after you've written your introductory paragraph with your hook, the points that you're going to explore and your thesis, then you're going to be writing what we call body paragraphs. If you have three points that you that you want to explain to defend your uh, your your thesis, then you'll have uh, three body paragraphs. If you're going to do a longer essay, you could have five body paragraphs, each one with its own point. Um, I use a system called the PEEL, P-E-E-L. That's an acronym. Each letter represents P stands for the point. E stands for explain your point. The next E stands for give examples and evidence. And the L stands for, after you've done that, link back to your thesis, which is sometimes we call that the conclude. The, uh, the, the concluding sentence of a body paragraph. So I'll just look to review these again with you. So point, you'll have one main point and maybe even sub, sub points under a main, your strong point in a body paragraph. Your opinion, your argumentative, you, whatever you wanna call your essay, it's your opinion, it's, it's, it's your argument, it's your, your persuasive idea. All these kinds of essays make uh, three to five different points which are the claims, the ideas that you have about the topic. And that will each require a body paragraph. So three points will need three body paragraphs. Five points will need five body paragraphs. Having stated your point, then you want to explain what you mean. It may not be clear. You need to write a sentence or two to explain that idea as you expand it. And then you give examples and you give evidence that you'll find online. And then you'll conclude your paragraph with the link. You'll, you'll link your main point and the points, any sub points that you made back to your thesis. So you basically end each paragraph restating your thesis. So we're, so we, we're reminded again and again, what is it you believe about artificial intelligence? Once you've completed your essay, Okay, you need to follow it with a list of the works cited, um, the reference, some, some people call it the references, but I, I like to call it the works that you cited. So you've gone online, you've gone to look at some texts, you've read some magazines, you've read some newspaper articles, maybe in print, maybe you found them on the internet, digital copies, you've gone to some websites, you need to, you need to reference those, you need to acknowledge where you got your information. So this gives credit to the original sources. Um, there are a number of ways of doing that. And I think the world has pretty much accepted that something we call MLA. MLA stands for the Modern Language Association of America, who a group of uh, academics who got together and said, all people should use one system of 
of uh, uh, referencing, of demonstrating how they reference their material, where they found it. And we call it MLA. You can go online. Every teacher talks about this. There's other systems, APA is another one. But at the high school level, we're all using the MLA formatting. That's universal. So you can go online and it will show you how you can cite um, a, uh, a website, how you can cite a book, a text, how you can cite a newspaper article. And you will put that into your essay and, and put a work cited at the end. So the judges can know where your ideas came from. I'm going to be stopping shortly to take some questions and just go a little further here. Okay, we'll stop there. So let me uh, stop stop the share because I'm then going to go on to talk about um, the uh, the artwork. So, are there any questions about essay writing? Let's give you a few minutes anyway. I teach, uh, uh, Kang wants to ask a question. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to ask that, uh, can like, are, are there any like uh, AI detections for other com competitors uh, essay? Like, yeah, like if they use AI to write that essay, yeah. then it means it is not qualified, right? That's correct. Yeah, there are ways of doing that. And I, I can't reveal them now, but teachers, universities are using it. You must be very careful. All universities now have detections. Uh, yeah, like Grammarly for, you know, we used to use a Grammarly uh, for plagiarism detection. There is a way of detecting. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, use, uh, use AI apps you use it to help you develop but don't don't submit work that was that was uh, entirely done or even partially done using something like uh, chat gpt yeah so that they will they will all be scanned all the essays will be scanned by grammarly and other ai detections yeah so be very careful okay thank you yeah anyone else yeah. number one on the screen please ask the question Okay, so hi, Mr. Phil. So I have one question. So for the concluding part about the essay, so you say like uh, there's a link and conclude your paragraph by linking your main point and the sub uh, sub points and claims back to your thesis. I'm not like it's not makes sense to me about how to do that. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's suppose I let's go back to my essay on coffee. Okay, so I've, I'm writing an essay on coffee. I believe that coffee is is good for your heart. I believe that coffee is good for your brain. I think it stimulates uh, the body, the heart. I think it's a good thing. Some people think coffee is bad, but I, I'll write an essay that's, that supports the idea that coffee is good. And I'll go and I'll find research that doctors say one cup of coffee a day is, 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 is very good for you. The, the, the problem with coffee is people drink too much. So drinking a little bit of coffee in the morning is, 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 a, is a good stimulant. And I give that example. And then I would end my, my paragraph by saying, therefore, science is, uh, is there, it's clear that science supports the daily drinking of coffee in moderation, because that's my thesis. And then I want to go on and talk about how, how uh, co coffee is a big business. It employs lots of people in underdeveloped countries. Growing coffee, you know, is a, is a skill that employs uh, people who don't have you know, edu great education, but they can they can work in the coffee fields. I find evidence that oh, one billion people earn their living by coffee. If we if we banned coffee, all those people would lose their job. Then I would end that sentence with a uh, linking to my thesis. Therefore, coffee uh, is an economic driver in a, in in <laughs> the economy. Okay, that's that's my thesis, and I'm linking it back. So every time I'm talking about coffee, I want to remind the audience it's a good thing. It's a good thing for, for your body, for your health. It's a good thing for the economy. That's what I mean by linking. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I like, uh, at the first time, I real, uh, I think it was a hyperlink or something else. Thanks. Uh, yeah. No, no. Just the word linking means connecting. You're, you're connecting the end of every paragraph. You're connecting what you just said 
back to what you believe and what you believe is your thesis. So you kind of restate your thesis. That way you're reminding me, ah, you believe it's good. Ah, coffee's good. Ah, it really is good, I guess. Doctors say it's good. It, people need it to, to, you know, to, to make, to, to, to feed their family. They make money. It's good. Good, good, good. And then, of course, what I didn't say at the end of your essay, a short, what we call conclusion paragraph. You basically state your thesis again, and you remind us what your key points were. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. Sure. One one thing I might say here is a lot of students, because I teach, have been teaching literature for a long time and history, all of those, those two subjects involve lots of essay writing. And I, I've been teaching essay writing to university students and high school students for a long, long time. And the question I always get is, teacher, which which point do I start with? I have like two really good points and I have a, 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 another point, a third point. It's not so strong, but it's okay. But I'm going to put it in my essay. Should I start with my best or my weakest? And I, I believe you start with your best, but your strongest, the one you really think is, oh man, this is the one. That's number one idea. Number two idea is good, but it's not the best. I would put number two at near the at the bottom, and I would put your weakest in the middle. Bury your weakest, hide it in the middle of your essay. So the person reading your essay says, "Whoa, that's really good." Mm, that's okay, and then, "Oh, that's also good." So you leave them fit reading your second best idea. Start with your best number one, number three, number two. Uh, different teachers have different opinions. That's my opinion. And uh, I think a majority of the other teachers uh, would agree with me. Uh, Any... Heidi, Heidi, can you can you ask the question? Um, so my question isn't that much about the essay, but uh, for the speech that we have to like show, like and then post it to you guys, um, are we allowed to like, you? Know, edit the video or like use any things to make the video more interesting or should we just go to a wall and then record our speech and send it no i i i, uh, I anton may may correct me on this one but i've seen some presentations no you can do that yeah yeah it's the three minutes yeah sure it should be it can be edited not a problem you could uh we're going to talk i'm going to talk about this the, the presentation okay because it is a video and you could uh you could definitely cut it edit it yeah Any other questions? Um, yes, uh, I have a little question. It is, it is completely necessary to do an a speech and video, or is it just a plus? It has to be done. It's compulsory. It has there has to be plus a presentation. Yeah. So oh yeah. To, thanks. Yeah, yeah. You have to record it and submit it with your essay or your artwork. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. I'm going to be talking about the artwork next. Yeah. Okay. If there, if there are no more questions, well, you, you may have some. So let me continue here. So let me share my screen. And um, if I was if I was in the competition, art artwork would be what I do because I, I'm more visual myself. So let's uh okay. You can all see my screen. So artwork. Well. The majority of students who submit artwork actually submit paintings. So I chose a, a picture of a, 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 of a painting. So you, you will represent visually in a painting what you believe the future uh, would look like with AI, okay? The future of the world under AI. So uh, it could be a small panel you could you could do a mural. A mural is a painting on a wall. You could go and do a huge painting if you like. If you think, oh, there's so much I have to say, you maybe need to expand your your palette, your your canvas. I mean, so um, you might want to work on a wall. You spray painting. I'm give you ideas. You know, don't think just of having a brush. If you get you do do a spray painted wall, it's possible, or a great big piece of canvas. Um, it's up to you. Uh, and of course, your uh, your oral presentation will be will, will will obviously be focused on what is in that artwork. How does it show us what you believe uh, the future of AI uh, to be? 
um, uh, you might consider doing what a, a, a collage since uh, since uh, talking about AI in the future of our world probably involves lots of different ideas and examples and explanations. A collage is just a, a collage just means a collection of materials. So it could be photographs, it could be pictures, it could be cut out, it could be include words. I've just used a neutral examples here to show you that a collage is just is anything stuck together that's been cut up from other sources. So uh, there would normally be words. You want to take some, cut some words out. Um, a collage can be a combination of things you cut out from magazines or from the internet that you print out. And a uh, painting, it could be anything you want, any 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 use of your imagination. So so that's a that's that's a a, a really wide open uh, approach to artwork. Just think of that as a collage. Go online uh, and use that word collage. You'll see lots of examples of how people have used uh, cutouts from magazines, um, uh, combinations of images and words. To, to to push an idea it's it's probably it's a very effective way maybe of talking about artificial intelligence and the future of our world um ai i just want to this is something i've just come across in the last day or two i took this um this is a is an image from a new, from the toronto star the pa newspaper uh, that comes out every day in the city where i live toronto ontario canada and uh ai and the future of humanity um, this article is about all the movies that are using that are addressing AI as a subject, not not using AI uh, to make them, but uh, talking about AI. Maybe movies with robots, or uh, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen any myself right at this point, but they're coming. They're coming. AI is a subject of movies. AI is also um, appearing in literature. And uh, yesterday, I was in a bookstore, and this book, Machine Like Me, by Ian McEwan, has just come out. He's a famous British writer, and it's about uh, uh, robots that act like humans. And it appears that in this particular book, the robots are beginning to develop feelings, which no one thought they, they possibly could. This other book here by Kazuo Ishiguro, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, um, I read this book with a student. It's about Clara. Clara is a robot um, who um, can uh, can think, can communicate, looks human, does not look like, looks like a human being, but is actually a robot, um, but lacks feeling. And uh, this book suggests that Clara actually is in the process of learning feelings before she's destroyed. She's destroyed at the end of the book. It's a very, very good book. Clara and the Sun, uh, Machine Like Me, if you want to. But there, there are just many, many books. I, Robot. There are science fiction books that are dealing with artificial intelligence. Um, I'm just throwing this out. You might, uh, in terms of research, you might want to read one of these. It might give you some ideas if you're thinking of uh, working robots into your essay or your presentation, your artwork. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's possible to make a video. So you could do a, a video, uh, uh, make up a story, a fictional story uh, where you're you're uh, you're demonstrating to us how you perceive AI in the future of our world in the form of a video. Um, I'm going to suggest that it's three minutes long, about as long as the oral presentation. Keep it to three minutes if you're going to do a video, but no one at this point in our competition has ever submitted a video. As far as I know, Anton might correct me, but as far as I know, no one has ever done a video. Um, I've had students in my classes do a video, um, in fact, uh, on AI. Uh, so you can do that, work on it. Um, and that would be considered artwork. Okay, I'm going to, again, stop the share because I want to go and talk about oral presentations next. So, anyone? Does anyone have any questions about artwork? Could you do a sculpture? Yes. Could you could you create a sculpture? Of course you could. That's artwork. It doesn't have to be two-dimensional. 
could be three-dimensional. You could conceive of doing sculpture of metal, clay, whatever you want. If you can, and then your oral presentation would go in detail about that. Anybody have any questions about artwork? If you're thinking of something, you, you don't want to share your idea in front of everyone else, but if you have a question about artwork, I can maybe answer it. So anybody has any questions? Um, so as you can see, the requirement for submission is uh, um, an artwork. It may be a drawing of pictures or, you know, uh, an, a, a product of uh, animation. And it's also a video, but created by yourself using your original ideas, reflecting AI and the future of our world. So make sure that even you make the video, uh, but that it, your original uh, information and ideas and using your own creativity, that is considered a piece of artwork, okay? Uh, and then the, the length of the video, the length of the artwork is not uh, exceeding like three minutes in length. Yeah. Okay, Kaidi, you have a question? Oh, so I'm just wondering when you guys are evaluating like the students who does an essay and the students who does an artwork, is there like a difference when you evaluate them? That's a very good question. Uh, that's a very like would there be a category for artwork? No, I think it's uh no, I think it's the uh the content. I think the content is what will be judged. Yeah. Um, I, last year I uh, I saw a a, a students uh. Uh. Uh, did a poster and uh it was uh it, as she described the poster i thought to myself she's actually uh just she's explaining an essay but she has her 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 poster was the was the was what we were looking at but as she just described it i thought oh that's a wonderful essay she's just you know explaining it the way you would through an essay yeah so I think your artwork and your your oral presentation they they'll be considered together. You know, you could look at the artwork, but it needs to have someone explain it to us. So think of your 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 speech, your oral presentation as linked in with the artwork. An essay, you know, stands on its own, and the speech that goes with the essay would be just a summary or uh, a summary of it. Does that help you? Yeah. No, I think they're they're judged equally. Yeah, for sure. And someone might say, shouldn't we have like a movie competition? Like, shouldn't all the movies be together? No, because it's going to be full of ideas. You're being judged on your ideas and your opinion about AI in the, and how it will impact the future of our world. If, uh, if, if you can explain that best visually through art, great. If you think you know, I think I, I, I can only do that in an essay, then that's fine. But consider that if you're doing an artwork, you have the oral presentation to support it. So they kind of, you know, they go together. Uh, Hang, uh, you just raised your hand. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can uh, you remind me of the duration of the oral presentation of, of the artwork, please? Yeah, I three forgot minutes. about it. Sure, no problem. Three yeah, three minutes. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, and thank you. And I'm going to talk about oral presentations. Um, when I teach uh, when I teach ESL and English literature, I always have a unit. I start usually that my courses with oral presentation, how to speak, because speaking and listening are an important part of our edu of, of learning. We learn by listening. Uh, we also learn by listening to other people speaking. Um, and we and um, so. So how to make a, a great, a, a good, strong oral presentation is what I want to talk about next. So if, if there are no questions here, we'll have question time at the end. So let me share again and I'll go on and I'll talk about oral presentations. All right. <laughs> so you're going to make a three minute recorded speech. Um, and I've got some pictures here. Uh, the first thing I think I want to uh, show here is that you're how how 
what do you look like? What is the canvas? What is the the uh, the image that you are going to uh, show us? Uh, and and how you look? Well, first of all, for your recorded speech, unless uh, unless you're talking about your artwork, maybe that in which you'd have it. Um, I think your background needs to be neutral. Okay, no posters on the walls, no windows uh, with bright lights coming through. Look at this neutral background or blur the background. We can do that, of course. I could do that myself on, on Zoom. So you can blur the background. Here's a neutral background, neutral gray background. So no distraction. And what you wear, let, don't let it be distracting. Don't have a t-shirt with uh, you know, a rock band on it or a, uh, some, some, something distracting. So you know, it's, it's color's okay, but keep it neutral. It's your face that we're looking at. We don't want to be distracted by the backgrounds or by what you're wearing. So keep yourself neutral. And of course, I put this gentleman here in the middle. Have a pleasant look on your face. Okay. Be happy and confident. He doesn't look happy at all. He doesn't look like so you wouldn't want to have that kind of a of a look on your face when you're when you're talking. And um, how much of, of yourself should you reveal? Well, um, I think these photos here show us. Um, what we call a, a medium close-up. These are medium close-ups. A little bit of your shoulder, uh, not too much room above your head, a little bit, but not too much, um, and uh, not too much uh, space on the side, okay? It just so the focus is on your face and what you're saying. Um, if you need a little more room, then like this girl here, uh, she probably is going to use her hands, lift her hands up. Um, so you need to have that space for that. If uh, if you basically are just going to be speaking, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about hand hand talking, using your hands as you talk. Um, so if you if you feel uh, no, I just want to speak clearly with a nice look on my face, confident, um, then some something like this. All right. Um, the next thing: How do you express yourself? Express yourself clearly. And with what we call intonation, um, when we speak, it's important that our voice changes the tone and intonation. It goes up and down. We put emphasis on certain words so that we don't just speak every word with the same tone. We call that inflection. Inflection is is a, where, where, what are you emphasizing when you speak? Do you say every word with the same volume, with the same value, or do you do what my blurry picture here shows? Let me read what this is. Each word is given a different emphasis. So I would say, I didn't say he stole the money. 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 My inflection put emphasis on a different word each time I said that, depending on uh, uh, the meaning behind my sentence, okay? So, but more importantly than that is, 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 as you speak, change the tempo, change the emphasis, change the tone, put emphasis on keywords like artificial intelligence and the future of our world. Artificial intelligence and the future of our world. Artificial intelligence and the future of our world. Depending on where I put the emphasis, okay, I'm demonstrating uh, what I think is most important in the information that I give. So that's called inflection and intonation. Some people in the world cannot speak without using their body, their hands, their arms, as you see in my illustration here. It's called body language. We don't just speak with our mouths. We speak with our bodies. Some some cultures do it uh, more than others. Um, my background is um, French Canadian, 
And I grew up in Quebec, and many of my relatives were French-speaking French Canadians. French people um, are part of, of a group we call the Latin, the Latin, uh, 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 the Latin uh, race or the Latin group. So that's uh, French and Spanish people. If you know any French and Spanish people, you're probably familiar with the way people like me speak. We use our hands a lot. I use my hands a lot when I speak. Um, so you can see lots of examples in the uh, in these pictures of this young woman. Uh, you know, what is she doing? What's what what's what's she trying to say here? Oh my God, I made a mistake. Um, here, let me think. She doesn't just say say it, but she's demonstrating. Hey, back off! Oh my goodness. Hmm. Oh, I'm so tired. Wow, I can't believe it. Uh, what? Huh? I don't believe you. Oh my gosh. I no, please don't. You know, haha, ha, that's very funny. This shh, quiet, don't say anything. Okay, so so we can we can we can express words and language with our body. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I think it's uh, important when you do your oral presentation to use your body if you're comfortable doing it. Um you've got 3 minutes. Um emphasize what what you believe as I'm doing, as I'm going to show you in a minute, you can't see me, but I'm, I'm moving my hands. I cannot talk ever without moving my hands and, and, and using expressions in my face. But what is this man saying? First of all, um, he's got a neutral background, but rate the speaker. What, what do you feel he's trying to communicate? Anybody, anybody want to suggest? What, what trying to communicate an idea yeah he's communicating an idea what, what, yeah uh or trying to communicate a question or something like that i think yeah he's he's pulling you in he's got a nice smile on his face he's leaning forward he's like he he's he's got something important to say the way he he's holding his hands he said it's kind of like believe me you know oh trust me trust me uh well i think it's something like what do you think about that? Very good. Very good. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So so think about using your face, uh, your face, your hands, your arms, your body. When you're, when you're... Oh, God. I don't know. Um, the... Uh, if if you... Uh, huh? not, not all people... Not all people communicate... Um, my students, many of my students. Oh, someone has turned, some turn off your microphone. Someone is okay. Thank you. Um, if you feel like you want to your oral presentation, uh, you want to put some energy, some body language into your presentation, then give yourself more room. Don't don't have a close up. Stand up. Record yourself standing up so that you can use your body more. It's, it it why it's a very effective way of communicating. Nobody wants to spend uh, three minutes listening to someone talking about artificial intelligence uh, the way I am doing right now. I'm not interested. I, I look bored. I'm making you bored. Okay. So um, your body speaks as much as your voice. Body language. It's key to your oral presentation. Keep it to three minutes. And yes, you can edit it down. Oh, yep. oh. Anybody, anybody else have questions? Um, that's that was my last slide. That was my last slide. Um, so I have a question. It's like, uh, do you think there should be a, a limit to like a hand movement when we do an oral uh, presentation? It's like, because sometimes they just do their hands so much that it's been distracted. Oh, <laughs> it, 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 hands distracting? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So like, yeah. Just, just like every word they use the hand to like, yeah, yeah, like yeah no, that's true. That yeah, I, yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm emphasizing. I'm I I I use my hands when I speak, but I don't I don't don't do as much as I just demonstrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, basically, your body your body goes with your words. Oops. What's this? Someone is. Oops. Okay. Um, <laughs> Any other questions? Um, nobody has asked any question about photography. Okay, we talked about painting, and um, I'm 
uh, photography is one of my one of my hobbies. And um, uh, could you uh, could you submit a photo exhibit? I don't think so. I think I, I, I'm going to say no, but you could definitely, if you're a photographer, you could shoot photographs and turn those into a collage. Uh, you could take photographs and turn them into a video uh, that could be done, a combination. Just use your imagination. Artwork is very broad. And and someone went last week asked, could they... Could they use um, DALI, which is a an application, an AI application? That someone is hello. Someone is sharing. Uh, someone is sharing a screen. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, could you use DALI? Um, there's nothing, nothing would prevent us because, but what Dali requires is you, for you to input, to give it specific details. Could you create a Dali painting about AI in the future? You'd have to be very, very specific with it. Okay. I think it would be, um, uh, um, to do, to do one, um, it might be very difficult, but uh, it, it, your three minute oral presentation would be a key factor in how that would be evaluated. You would have to let us know that that's Dali. We could probably figure that out, that it was a Dali created uh, artwork. Uh, your oral presentation would, would have to uh, be, be very, very strong in terms of how does that Dali painting represent your opinion of AI and the future of our world. But uh, yeah, you could definitely give it a try. Yep. Okay, Fong. <clears throat> Hi, I wondered if uh, frequent hesitance could affect our summary score. If like, for example, if uh, during the presentation, I accidentally uh, said the wrong word and I want to repeat it, but I couldn't make out the, 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 the point of myself. Okay. So would that affect my summary score? No, I wouldn't think so, no. No, I wouldn't think so. I've I've stumbled lots of times in this hour that I've been talking. I've I've, I've heard myself stumble. You correct yourself. No, um, you know uh, if you if you feel if you feel you're going to make too many of them, then you'll want to practice and just the, the the advantage of having a video speech is that uh, you can redo it until you you're satisfied with it or you can edit it. Uh, Yeah, we're not we're not we're not uh, judging professional speakers. What's important is your ideas. Your, your what do you believe? Can you convince the judges uh, uh, that the future of artificial intelligence, as you see it, uh, they believe your vision. What is your vision of of AI and the future of our world? And uh, it's the ideas. Okay, it's not a speech. Uh, we're not we're not judging. Uh, the quality of your uh, your speaking, your your accents. Okay, the judges are interested in the ideas. <laughs> okay, uh, Ronaldo. Well, um, is it necessary to be traditional art, or just could it be digital art? I mean, like drawing on an app and then print it or something. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great tool. It's a great tool. Um, yeah, I got lots of. I have lots of students who work in only dig digitally with their with their art, their apps and art. Sure, it's art is such a broad, broad, uh, you know, discipline. Any anything that you, you can, as I said, if uh, you know, if you're a sculptor, you could you could take metal and 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 then wood and create a uh, some big piece of sculpture that 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 uh, that would represent you what you feel the future of ai would be and uh, and your your oral presentation would explain it in detail um the and the uh, the judges would say wow that's great i can see that that sculpture how how that uh, that's such a clear um representation of what that student thinks Heidi. I just have two really quick questions. Yeah. Um, so how many submissions do you guys usually get? Oh, 
uh i i we're expecting over 100 i think it's 125 uh, it's, yeah they're 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 coming in they're coming in and also so i just want to say don't be put off by that right it's only 100 <laughs> around from around the world so that's not i mean it could it could go up uh, yeah uh, don't <clears throat> i'm always reluctant to say to students oh no the competition is going to be so many people you know your chances of of winning are very slight don't think that way you don't think that way the more the merrier we say okay that basically answers my other questions so thank you okay where are you based heidi pardon where are you living where are you based uh i'm in canada nova scotia Okay. Oh, love Nova Scotia. Love it. Been there three times. Yep. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um. So, uh, everybody, uh, just relax because uh, the number of submission uh keeps increasing, but every competitor is the winner. Yes. Him or herself. So don't worry. You don't need to know how many submission, how many competitors are joining the competition. Uh, if you try your best to submit your essay and artwork, and then you are a winner already, right? And then all of you who submitted the competition, um, you know, uh, work, and then you will receive a, the certificate of participation. And at least, you know, when you started to, uh, you know, uh, work on your accent and video, you improve a lot of your your skill already. So that's what we really want young people to do. Yeah. If you, if any of you are uh, apply, going to be applying to North American universities or colleges uh, for your post-secondary education, um, you will gar guarantee you will be asked uh, a number of questions and when you uh, apply. And quite often, they'll ask you to talk about uh, a significant event in which you participated, um, a, a, an important event in your life, something like that. You can use this as an example, an example of, of a time that you, you know, you did some deep, deep research into artificial intelligence and you thought about the state of the world and how AI will help or hinder, it will help or impede progress. Uh, you could use that as an example. Many universities are uh, asked the kinds of questions that what you're working on now could be a, 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 a very good answer. Um, and also too, that certificate will count for something. It's a, it, it's a lot of work that you're gonna be putting in a lot of work over the next nine weeks to, uh, to write that essay and, and present the oral speech or to do the artwork. So it's a, it's a big investment of your time. And, um, and and you can you can use that to your advantage. And anytime anytime you're asked to write an essay, I think is a is a very good practice for for all the courses that you take. Everybody's asking students to write essays, and um, I've given you a a structure for writing essays that uh, that is pretty acceptable at all levels. And I've 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 built my I built my presentation uh, on essay writing over a number of years based on uh, working with the teachers from other schools at the university level. And so what I'm offering you is what a university expects. When you go to university, you're expected to have a hook, introductory, links, all that appeal system. That's what an essay has to be at the university level. That's what they're looking for. So I know all students struggle writing essays because we get confused. I, I don't know how to start. I don't know what, what, what the order is. I don't know, you know, uh, so I've given you a, a system, a peel system. Uh, you can use, you can build on that. Any other questions? So it's time to ask the questions for Phil. Okay, Phil. Hi, uh, I have two questions. The first one is, what are the platforms that we should use to record our presentation? Since the extracted files from different platforms are displayed in <clears throat> various plugins. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think uh, there are lots of M M MP4. Uh, I mean, I, I, 
we can handle any submissions. Uh, uh, Anton, we get our students will can record on Zoom. Uh, yeah, we can accept all platforms. So it's whatever whatever you have on your computer, whatever you're comfortable with, you can submit. Uh, and pay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the the platform, there are so many, right? You can do the recording uh, on Zoom uh, by all yourself. Nobody will distract you. And you can also ask your parents, like your brother, sister, uh, to make a video of, of you in front of the camera. Of course, uh, that way you need to practice a lot because you will be distracted by a person in front of you. It's like you are trying to uh, present a, a piece of work, you know, in front of the camera. And I think it's, it's, you know, in some way that is really good because you're trying to be confident. You don't feel shy. Okay. Uh, but one note is that you need to upload the video on your channel, like YouTube, or if you are in China, you can use Bilibili. You upload your video on the link and then share the link with us in the email because you know the system cannot receive like two uh, GP, uh, two GB uh, submission. No, it's too large for us to receive it. So make sure that you upload your video on your own channel and share the link with us. Make sure that the link and the video is shareable, it's readable because you know the experience that uh, some people submitted the link, but we couldn't download it, okay? Because you said like private or you said unlisted, then we couldn't accept the video. So, and then uh, we don't really have time to ask you, please, you know, share your video again. Yep. Any other any other questions? Um, so the second question is, are we allowed to post two essays or videos? for our submission oh no only one only one the final product so, the so final has, product yeah it has to be a final yeah uh um, so feel that i i understand the question so you say okay whether they can uh submit like two video again one video it consider like the artwork you know if you can do it so it's acceptable because you don't really, you don't uh, like the essay writing. You can make a video, you know, like an artwork, right? You, you make a video and submit it. Yes. So in that case, there are two separate video. One is for the artwork and one is for the essay. Thank you so much. Okay. More questions. We still have like 25 minutes. Any, does anybody have any questions uh, if you were with me last week based on last week's I went through all the uh, all the ways that AI is having an impact on um, the environmental research uh, business law marketing we talked about medicine anybody have uh, any thoughts about that since we since we we, we discussed it uh Julian Oh, many, so many ways that AI is every every day in the newspaper or online. I'm reading about more and more and more happening. They have one question, uh, Julian. Um, yeah. So, and my question is, uh, up to what extent can I edit the video? Like, can I add, can I add visuals and support the video with visuals and? Yes, you could do that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you mean your oral presentation? Yes, you could, I think. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You could it does, yeah, it, it you could be what we call a talking head, just 3 minutes talking. Uh or you can have you know, 3 minutes uh talking and things are coming in, you know. Coming in. Oh, man. Uh, for example, oh. if I have a negative vision about AI in the future or right now, it it doesn't matter if my if my if a point of view is negative. I can express myself in that way. Yes. Yeah. It's your it's your view. Yeah. It's how you see the world based on what's yeah, based on what you what what's being done now. 
are, you know, good and bad, the good and the bad. I mean, you don't have to take one side. You can, you know, you can say uh, terrible things. No, AI will destroy our world. You can go that way. Can you prove that? Can you prove that with three to five good, strong points and examples? Um, uh, um, or yes, some things will be good. Some no. In other areas, we have to be careful. That's fine. You know, it's a back and forth, pro con. Um, or it could be totally positive. You just only see positivity. You might want to put a warning in there, but everything is going to be fantastic. Uh, but you might want to you might want to use one of those transitional words like however. Uh, nevertheless, you know, everything's great. We've got so much nevertheless, and you want to maybe put some a point or two in about dangers. It's, it's up to you. So uh, I just want to remind you of the uh, the first master workshop, uh, Mr. Phil, is that and also uh, discuss how to choose a really good topic for AI and the future of our world. Um, so if you missed the first workshop, now you can also ask the question, uh, what is a good topic, whether uh, my topic I'm going to write about is, is good or not, so he can give you some ideas. Uh, Kang? Um, can I ask that uh, about like what if like I I point out topics that are very like it is about things that doesn't exist yet and yeah. totally in my imaginations. Yeah. So so what you're what you're suggesting is that uh, in the future, you believe AI will do this, this. It's not able now, but it, it, it'll do this. And then you'd want yeah. to say, well, why, why do you want it to do that? that that's not possible now. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can't, can't even because, think. Uh, <laughs> uh, because in my op opinion, I think like uh, if I am worth, if I were to talk about AI, I need to make like uh, really interesting topics about things that doesn't exist say, and provide some evidence of the current technology we already have now and uh, what and how it will. Yeah, I would predict how it will be developed into. Yeah, like that. Exactly, because that's exactly what AI researchers are doing now. They've got tools. There are things that are working. But they, uh, they, 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 they want to, they want to, they want to go further. They want to go deeper. So they have to predict. So they're trying to develop algorithms, and they're trying to train, uh, you know, their AI, their systems, uh, with, uh, with, with information and data to to take. And they don't even know how it how it can go. There's a lot of mystery. As I, uh, what I'm reading about these days is, the the um, researchers know they have a powerful tool. They know how to train AI programs with uh, with data, with knowledge. Now there's there's a resistance to that. For example, there are uh, AI systems are being trained on for for example to 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 come up with creative creative uh, ideas, essays, uh, writing stories, writing music, writing movie scripts, TV shows using AI. How are they doing that? Well, they're they're feeding they're feeding data, they're feeding novels. How how writers develop character, how writers tell stories, all the things that um, I, as an English teacher, try and teach my students how to use metaphors, symbols. All of that is being programmed in, and writers are beginning to say, "Whoa, hey, I didn't give you permission to take my book and feed it into your AI program, okay? To generate generative AI to generate stories. That's my that's my work. I." You have to pay me for it, or you have to ask my permission. So there is resistance, um, and that's in all fields. Privacy writers are asking uh, that AI researchers stop using their their knowledge to to train AI programs. You can you might want to look at that. So, but we do know that AI researchers today know they have a powerful tool that's that that's even more powerful than they even imagined. It's doing things they couldn't even, they didn't think would happen, but 
but in but the outputs are surprising even the researchers and they say wow uh, we need to control this because it's it's controlling us. It's 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 doing things we didn't think it could do. That's um, and maybe that's what you're thinking, right? So yes, uh, so yeah, you wanna you wanna look out into the future um, and how it will change the world. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, by the way, I uh, yesterday. Uh, a woman, uh, believe she's a Japanese woman, had a novel published. She won a big prize for it, and five percent of her book was 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 uh, generated by AI. I don't know what program, but five percent of the book was generated by AI. And someone said, "Whoa, you should not have been given that prize because that was not your work." And she uh, she described the five percent of the AI generated work was based on. She wrote 95% of the book herself, 5% was AI, and uh, it was generated because she said, I gave it information. It gave words back, but it was my ideas. I gave it the information I wanted it to work with, and it produced 5%, and I looked at it. I made a few changes, um, uh, and then I put it into my work, and that's been accepted. And so that's you partially using AI, uh, but 95% it was her work, but she controlled the AI. It didn't control her. And that's how that's how we need to use. We need to control it, steer it for the better of our world. Because it's such a powerful tool. It it can learn on its own. That's the whole idea. But as I said last week, can a computer program ever feel, have emotion? Uh, Pekan, you have another question? Uh, yeah, I have a question that related to politics. Are you saying uh, on a previous question, you say that AI is a powerful tool and we have to use to steering our world? And I want to know how it will affect politics and what a politician using it for. Hmm. <laughs> politicians are using it. Uh, well, some politicians are using it for evil, I'm afraid, propaganda, generating propaganda. You can um, you can give an AI an AI program a sample of your voice, give it your your facial give give it uh, you know a representation of your face it will copy your face in all its different angles uh, take pictures of you and then put a put together an avatar basically a robot a bot of you looks like you talks like you sounds like you and you can put words into its mouth and so you could do that and you could put that on the internet and who would know um tiktok and and x you know um uh, all these all these uh, uh, platforms uh, have controls. Uh, they're trying very hard, but there's so much coming at them, being put up on the internet, um, and we're not always sure that those companies are uh, are uh, Google and whoever are are controlling it, are 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 noticing when it's not a true person. So uh, we have lots of examples of politicians who have taken their opponents. Put words into the into the opponent's mouth. Created a an avatar for their looks just like their opponent. Put it on the internet. People believe it. So uh, yeah, poli poli pol propaganda politics. Um, politics is uh, unfortunately all about winning. It should it should be about helping people and making a better world. But often uh, politicians are about themselves and um, winning at all costs. So politics. Uh, AI is being used, I'm afraid, in many parts of the world for uh, to 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 lie, to to misrepresent, to weaponize. We use the word weaponize information. Yeah, but it could it it could be it could be used for good, and it would be up to you to think of good examples. But yeah, it's it's whenever whenever uh, competition you know for power is involved. Any tool like AI can be used for 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 evil. Okay, 
uh, one more person, another person, Kang. Well, like I have heard about your story of a like a woman author that writes uh, books that contains five percent of her content. That content that is generated by AI. Can like, can I ask that uh, in our essay, like our actual essay, could we use like five percent of our essay that is that produced by AI? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what is what is uh. What is, uh, for example, ChatGPT? What is ChatGPT? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, a knowledge base that's been yeah. fed millions and millions and millions of bits of information uh, up until apparently 2021. It's it's dated. It's it's not current, but it's been fed all kinds of information, which is why it generates such interesting answers. I use it as a teacher. I use it to create. Um, uh, lesson plans for myself if i rather otherwise i'm going to have to spend hours and hours on the internet going all over the place pulling information where it was ai can be very helpful to me and i you know I, i i read it carefully i modify it i change it uh, but it's a it's a it's it's a very very so, useful tool. you should definitely uh, not, mm. av not avoid it you're going to be google yeah, as, as long as i control it and then i fix it and put changes into it right Yes, yeah, yeah. It's going to uh, it's going to be very helpful. Why wouldn't you okay. use it? Right? You should use it. If you use the Google search uh, research. You go online all the time. Uh, so it's yeah. just another tool. It's a tool. Yeah, it'll give you some. Thank great... you. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to to add a note here. Even though you use like ChatGPT, you use AI platform to uh helps you to polish your essay remember essay is only one requirement for the competition because you also have like a video speech and then at this time no matter what vocabulary you use in your essay but in your video speech you know you need to guarantee you need to make sure that you know how to express at least the similar ideas in your essay, right? Uh, not to say the video speech must be a better version of your essay because you have to explain, you have to clarify, you have to discuss, you know, in further details. So uh, I should I strongly suggest that you use AI to support you, to help you as an assistant, but all your, you know, original ideas are yours. Right? Make sure that, that your idea, your opinion, and then you learn from that. For example, you put into chat GBT, you say, okay, please revise my paragraph. Okay. And then you can learn new vocabulary. You can learn really, really good vocabulary and it becomes yours. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that we teachers are trying to use uh, AI to support our work. And uh, we hope you you know, to do the same thing. And remember too, the judges are university professors, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, Shenyang University in China, universities here in Ontario. These are professors uh, with knowledge of, of artificial intelligence. So, <laughs> so they'll, they'll know, they'll know uh, the quality of the essay, you know, is just above anything they, they could even write. Sometimes I get work from my students. I could not write an essay as good as some of the work that's given to me. And that always says to me, plagiarize, plagiarize. And so, uh, you know, we, we know it's just, it's common sense as teachers. We read so much. We'll, we'll know we have a, a gut feeling. We call it a gut feeling in our soul that something doesn't seem like it could have come from a student at high school, uh, unless you're brilliant, but then you'll have your oral presentation and we'll say, ah, Something about the way they present orally just does not come close to the quality of that essay. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, we we're going to jump to conclusions, but there's you just have gut feelings. A lot goes into judging. It's not just the material, but we have sense that something is not quite uh, what it should be.
I didn't explain myself well there, but uh, I think everybody might understand what I'm saying. And you know that, you'll know that too. Well, uh, it's been great, guys. Uh, we call these master classes. I'm not sure how, how much of a master I, I, have, I am in terms of helping you to understand, because I myself am still a student of AI. But as I said last, last time, I've been thinking about AI for many, many, many years when I had the opportunity to, to do a, an early uh, a TV show, one of the first uh, media uh, representations of what ha was happening in AI research. And I had a chance to meet uh, the great pioneers, many of whom are not even alive today. Uh, they were um, already men and women in their 70s when I met them 40 years ago, but they are the pioneers. It's like talking to uh, a, uh, Albert Einstein. I, I basically met the Albert Einsteins of AI. It was a great opportunity. I'll never forget it. Uh, how how um, privileged I was to hear these men and women who were at the very beginning, the pioneers, telling me how 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 they're going, how they're going, what they see, and and I thought, oh, it's impossible. There's no way a car could drive itself. Come on, nobody nobody at the wheel. I, I just you just just looking looking to see where the edges are and the color differences and, and how and and it's here. It's here today. I thought, oh, there's no way a computer could. Um, could uh, treat cancer. There's, you know, uh, safely examining all these, all the drugs and all the treatments, but it's here, it's happening now. And we need it because it's so expensive. Hospitals and doctors and nurses, um, they're, not, they're not enough people. There are too many sick people getting all kinds of diseases and AI is finding the solutions. AI gave us the COVID vaccine. In record time, and AI is is improving the COVID vaccine. Uh, so, in, just in the field of medicine, it's been remarkable. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of there, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, there should be the last question for this section before I wrap up, you know, this morning uh, presentation. So, anybody will ask the last question. Tu minh. It's yours, your chance. Uh, so if you say that AI would replace us in every single way, shape, and form, then would we lose jobs and become homeless or something? Yeah. There are some areas, of course, where AI has replaced jobs. Uh, just think of the automotive industry, right? You will go to an automotive plant today, Ford, Toyota, whatever, uh, robots. Robots are putting cars together. That used to be men and women. Uh, so machines have already done that. And now they're now, sure, AI is taking over uh, many jobs, but it's taking over what kind of jobs? It's taking over the dangerous jobs, the jobs that people don't want to do. Machines are much more effective. It's giving people back a little more time to to focus on uh, what humans can, can do well, which is, uh, you know, talk to uh, talk to customers. Um, doctors can talk to their patients, uh, giving giving people more time to do uh, the human things, the human jobs, the jobs that require thinking and emotion. Uh, computers have taken away the drudgery, we call it, the 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 the, 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 the time consuming tasks. They're great computers. They add and subtract, and uh, they they do a lot of uh, a lot of mechanical things for us now. Athena. Oh, I want to ask a question about this competition. Is essay sent as a file in the email? I'm sorry, would you say that again, Athena? Is essay sent as file in the email? Is is the should the essay be sent as a file in the email? Yes. A Word doc, yeah, sure. Uh, I would say a PDF, right? Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, uh, thank you everybody uh, for joining us this morning and this evening. And uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Philip Desaden, to have presented like two different uh, master workshops, which are very, very useful for all the participants. So everybody remember at uh, the same time next week, was Saturday, uh, 8.30 until 10 a.m. EST, Toronto time. 
uh, make sure that you will join us for the section uh, with the topic on how to express your ideas through the artwork. So we will uh, dedicate the section to you know, how to put your ideas, how to put your imagination into the artwork. Because I believe that is easy, but not easy at all. Because only one picture or one drawing, you have to put a lot of ideas there. How to make the audiences and then how to make the judges understand and feel your ideas. Okay, uh, so you are invited back to the third master workshop on AI and the future of uh, our world. So thank you very much for the great work this morning. And then thank you so much, uh, Mr. Philip Desaden, for your presentation, which is really valuable. Thank you, everybody. I hope to see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. And good night. Good morning. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Bye bye. Uh -huh.